Boker Tov, happy Lag Ba'omer, Lag Sameach, as they say over here in Israel. And welcome everyone to our shir, morning shir in Chasidut. And thank you to Raya and Mordechai for hosting and broadcasting the shir. Today we're going to do a special edition of the morning shir in honor of Lag Ba'omer and in honor of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Today is the day that Rabbi Shimon passed away. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the author of the Zohar, and he writes at the end of the Zohar several details about the experience of the final hours, perhaps, the final period before Rabbi Shimon actually passed away. One of the things that you'll notice when you go to Miron or when you watch the the live broadcast from Miron and in many places around the world you'll recognize the simcha the joy, the tremendous joy that everybody has and so the obvious question is what kind of joy can there be from the passing of a tzaddik any person that passes away it's very very sad how much more so a tzaddik how much more so Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that it says that his neshama was the same neshama as Moshe Rabbeinu. Wow, that's a very holy, great neshama. So what's the dancing all about? What's there to be happy about? And the answer lies in Rabbi Shimon's w- words itself. That this day is like a Yom Hilula. Hilula literally means a wedding. We also call it a Hilula when it's a yard site, the day of the passing of any tzaddik. But it comes in. I hope you still hear me. Great. So it's... Kebei Hilula, it's like a, a wedding. What does that mean that the day of the passing of a tzaddik is like a wedding? Once we we'll understand it, it will add some under, un, uh, explanation to why we're happy. Because when there's a wedding, then everybody is happy. Why is the day of a passing of a tzaddik considered like a wedding? But what happens by a wedding? Why is everybody so happy? Why does everybody dance? There are many good things that happen in the world, but by a wedding, it's out of the norm. There's an exceptional, an exceptional simcha and joy that everyone experiences. And the reason is because on a spiritual level, that there are two neshamas, that are coming together, that are going to build a home and build a family in Am Yisrael. That is such an amazing zikhut, a huge merit that everyone around, not only the Chatan and Kala themselves, but also everybody that participates in the simcha of the couple and of the families also feel the great spiritual experience. And that's exactly, or similarly, that what happens by the passing of a tzaddik. The tzaddik fulfilled his mission to the maximum being in this world. And also, the life of a tzaddik is a life of ahavav, yirah, love and fear of Hashem and faith in Hashem. And so, when, the, when a tzaddik's neshama passes away, a similar two things happen. The neshama goes back to its source, all fulfilled, all loaded with mitzvahs. And at the same time, it has a strong connection to the world down here, to the people that he inspired while the neshama was down here in this world. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is not just 
a tzaddik that was disconnected from the world. Rather, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had and continues to have a strong connection to every person who learns the Zohar or learns his Torah that he taught us from Hashem, not only in Kabbalah, also in the revealed parts of the Torah. And on this day, all of his accomplishments shine. So what do we have? We have a merging of the spiritual and the, and the materialistic aspect of the world. That is very similar to the concept of a wedding where we connect the materialistic building of a home and building of a family with the greatest blessings from Hashem. That merging, it's not just a technical wedding between a uh, chatan and kala, but moreover, it's something which is which 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 has a very strong spiritual symbol, and that's why it's called a hilula. Hilula means a wedding, and so on this day, we're not happy, chalila. God forbid that the tzaddik passed away. We're happy about this, the, the amazing aura and atmosphere. That How much more so if you have the zuchut to go to Miron and to participate and to go to the tzaddik's resting place on the day of his passing. How much more so that it's a great, what a great zuchut it is. I want to say something very special about this day. We find ourselves now in Lagba Omer, not just any Lagba Omer, Lagba Omer of the year 5782. It's one year since the terrible, most difficult tragedy that Am Yisrael has experienced in recent history. We're not here to measure one tragedy versus another. But there's no question that 45 great neshamot, great souls were painfully crushed to death last year, exactly one year ago. Don't ask me to explain it because I'm not planning on explaining it because I don't know Hashem's ways. But it definitely seems like some kind of decree. A bad dream. A terrible, unspeakable, unthinkable tragedy. That children, Bacharim, adults passed away in a very short amount of time right near the kever of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It's simply unfathomable. It breaks one's heart. I know the children of one of the Kedoshim. I knew him. His last name actually was Tzadik. And we're talking about the yard site of a Tzadik. The only way to find some inspiration that I humbly was able to find was by thinking about Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was the Rebbe of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was one of the five students that remained alive after the terrible plague when 23,995 students passed away in this short amount of time of Svirat Omer. And they stopped passing away on this day of Lagba Omer, which later became Rabbi Shimon's yard site. It's very difficult, but try to put yourselves in the shoes of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi, just in short, Rabbi Akiva a little bit of history. He was totally ignorant till the age of 40. 
Within a couple of years, he made it into yeshiva, maybe less. And he accumulated and within 24 years, 24,000 students. And Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva became the Rabbi Akiva, one of the greatest Torah scholars of all of our history. One of the greatest leaders, one of the greatest teachers of our rich history. And then in a short amount of time, many thousands of his students pass away. It, it's, it's, it's just unthinkable how many funerals they had every single day. Just a simple math. Let's say it was 30 days, 40 days, 49, whatever, whatever the amount of days were, there were several thousand funerals a day. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable. It's terrible. No one should ever know of such a terrible tragedy. Now, how do you think Rabbi Akiva felt after the tragedy? And he only had five students left. I think a regular person with regular feelings would either give up. Basically, a person would see their entire life's accomplishments crash down within a very short amount of time. How could you continue? How could you continue? A human being. How much strength and courage can a human being have? But the Talmud tells us what Rabbi Akiva did. He must have sat Shiva for all of his students. He got up after Shiva and he started going around Israel from town to town, from city to city. And to start rebuilding his yeshiva. Signing up new students. And not giving up. I think when we ponder about Rabbi Akiva. And how he responded to his tragedy. It should give us some kind of inspiration how to how to get our together, how to get our action together is more important on this first yard site of the 45 Kedoshim which so, so tragically passed away. It's easy to feel like a quote-unquote human being it can't be. How could this have happened? A hundred thousand questions that a human being can ask. After all, we're human beings. What do you want from us? But on this day of Lag Baomer, where Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai are the stars of this day, let's try to learn from Rabbi Akiva, which means to lift us up, to become focused and to try to build up our, our observance of Yiddishkeit and most importantly, our spreading of Yiddishkeit. So if there were 45 tzaddikim which so tragically passed away. So let's try to do extra mitzvahs in the number of 45. So whether you want to give out 45 Shabbat candles before this Shabbat to women who may not have Shabbat candles or may not be familiar with a mitzvah, wonderful idea. If you want to put on 45 
Tefillin, Tefillin of 45 people, another wonderful idea. Belin Neder, today by the Ta'alucha, by the by the Lagba Omer Parade, I'm going to announce that any child or any person that starts to learn Sefer Mitzvot, the, the mitzvah of the day from the Rambam, Chabad Rechavia is going to give you as a gift the, the book of Sefer Mitzvot. So you should be able to learn every single day the mitzvah of the day in memory of at least one of the 45 neshamot. And I would like to connect it to a name. So you can have in mind every single day that you're learning this Sefer mitzvot, this mitzvah of the day, in memory of this Kadosh. And also all the other ones, but specifically this one. May Hashem help us. Only He can help us. May Hashem help us that on this day of Lag Bomer, we should have the revelation of Mashiach Tzidkenu, our righteous Mashiach, who is also the Neshama of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and of Moshe Rabbeinu. And we should be in the Beit HaMikdash to the Beit HaMikdash because we're so close over here in Yerushalayim to the Beit HaMikdash and we should have the revival of those that have passed away. And everyone, including those 45 Kedoshim, should be in the lead. May we only know happy occasions and no more sorrow whatsoever. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a wonderful Lagba Omer. Looking forward to seeing you in a few hours at 3 o'clock at 11 Bitsalo Street, right here in Rechavia Nachlot. Thank you very much.